Hi folks, a nice Saturday at end of October 2017. We're here at the Centre of Computing History in Cambridge in the UK. The Centre hosts today the Spectrum 35 event. And we will now enter the museum and have a tour. Okay, here the reception desk with the volunteers. Hello. Small shop. The kiosk. And now technology starts. We have here the BBC Micro sign. And here we have four bottles of champagne, which are signed at the events of having the ARM chips running during development in the mid-1980s. Story about Sophie Wilson and uh, her invention of the arm chip. On the back, we will see a computer filled with uh, LEDs to explain people how the whole thing works. <laughs> In this display we have uh, the very first computers from uh, Sinclair and Acorn, the MK14 and the Acorn System 1. Handmade prototype of the MK14. This is a hand-drawn layout of the arm chip and here complete computer system by ACO. So this is the classroom where some of the sessions will happen later on today. And this is the event's schedule. Some arcade machines. Primal Rage by Atari. And uh, some drawings by kids about uh, pixels. <laughs> nice feedbacks from the children. Okay, now the main room. Already pretty crowded. And on the ceiling, portrait of ICC, ICC people. People who play the major role in technology in the world. So I let the impression speak. I'm not telling much. As it's a Sinclair weekend, we have uh, the first few Sinclair artifacts here the Timex Sinclair 1000 and Timex Sinclair 1500.
also micro from the Eastern European countries. Not only home and personal computer, also big systems like uh, Hewlett Packard machine. And there are some traders today which uh, have their stalls selling goods. Some displays related to Sinclair. Here's a unique item, a transparent ZX micro drive. Which was made under the wings of Sinclair Research, most likely for internal use. More Sinclair machines, ZX Spectrum, ZX Spectrum Plus, and another Spectrum here with some expansions on it. And uh, <laughs> third party models of the spectrum, and on the left, the system test cartridge by Sinclair Research. People working on the machines, trying them out, playing some games, having fun. The ZX Spectrum in the timeline. On top, Sinclair C5 vehicle. Some displays with uh, game machines like uh, the Atari Lynx. More machines, more people trying them out. An Acorn A30110. With nice uh, high color graphics. An Atari ST. And uh, Memo Tech MTX512. There's a program on it. Let's run the thing. Hello world. More Sinclair Spectrum models. Plus and the Plus 2. On the other side, we have a Toast Rack Spectrum 128K running a game, some retail boxes, the grey Spectrum Plus 2 made under the wings of Amstrad, retail box of the traditional Spectrum. And modified spectrum where a user tried to improve the keyboard at least sort of hmm. an early model from the first batch issue one motherboard and the gray rubber keys spectrum plus retail box Kind of a moonwalker. A display about Sir Clive Sinclair, where visitors can choose a selection of videos to watch, like the Sinclair QL TV advertisement. And 
read some text about how the story evolved and ended for Sinclair computers. Some more displays. That side. Some Apple Macintosh. Like I think this is the 20th anniversary edition. Not sure if it's true. Then uh, iMac. More Apple. Apple II. Apple Macintosh. And the Microvac. Another Spectrum Plus <laughs> and a Plus 3. Here we have the Sinclair QL launched in early 1984, some 12 days before the Apple Macintosh. This is the software demo running like uh, the word processor, which was quite ahead of its time in the mid-80s. Commodore Amiga. Okay. Now let's pass the dealer's corner. Plus? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. This is a pre-production model. It's not um, not the final uh, item, but it's um, it's part of a small production run that was done some months back. Okay. Nice. So yeah, it's it's a nice unit. Okay. Thank you. ZX81 and the Spectrum. The stall of uh, Rakewell, Rick Gerhardy. Some second hand stuff on that side. More displays with Sinclair. Design icon ZX80. <laughs> Spectrum Plus 128K and some other British micros in competition to Sinclair, Auric, A Kern, or a Lynx. More display, portable machines. Cameras, calculators, a Sinclair Cambridge calculator. In the middle, I think it's an executive gold edition and the Sinclair Oxford. All early 1970s. Then the design icon, the black watch from Sinclair, 1975. Some more portable devices, televisions like uh, the Sinclair Microvision or here a later uh, Sinclair Button Radio. In the early 80s, mid 80s, there was this Sinclair flat screen pocket TV, FTV1 which had a cut hold tube in a very special form factor. 
more portable devices which came later. Huge IBM mainframe. Not really a mainframe, it's a RS6000 SP, so it's more like a huge workstation. And uh, always powerful enough to play a good game of chess. And it was the IBM Deep Blue machine, which uh, was beating Gary Kasparov in a game of chess in uh, 1997. Yeah, a friend from Scotland with his offering and the ceiling from the other end of the hall. Some more arcade machines in the back room. Story to dawn of electronic computers. A lot to read about and uh, several artifacts on display. Really old stuff in computing terms. Like this arithmetic logic unit from the EDSAC 2. IBM 370. Always nice the marketing pictures of the computers in the 1960s and 1970s. Also nice namings like Susie. itself wasn't looking that sexy. Old part of an ICL machine. Here we have uh, systems made by digital equipment corporation and on that table two machines personal computers made under the wings of Amstrad on the left the Amstrad PCW which was running CPM as its operating system and on the other side the Sinclair PC 200 made under the wings of Amstrad a computer with Intel CPU and uh, running MS-DOS. Here we have some military machines, old equipment, stuff from the 1960s, 1970s most likely. Here we have a portable military personal computer from the mid-1990s. This tape is made by Ferranti. Ferranti was also the company who produced the ULAs for the Sinclair ZX computers. This is quite an iconic machine, the Altair 8800. More old stuff, calculators, and here we have a typical 70s office. So it's like going back in time 
with a time machine, an acoustic coupler, a sharp MZ80 computer, an old Baroque calculator, Commodore, CBM, dual floppy disk, huge one, even it's already five and a quarter inch, video recorder by Sanyo, mechanical typewriter, eight inch floppy disk, who rem rem remembers the printouts made on matrix printers, black and white TV, terminal, printouts on matrix printer, graphic produced by with the use of characters. Yeah, journey back in time. This was the 70s office. I'm not the only one filming today. Here we have another display. This is with the Cambridge Z88. Made under the wings of Sir Clive Sinclair with his follow-up company, Cambridge Computers. This is the relatively unknown form EMI Liberator. Form EMI was uh, producing the Sinclair QLs for Sinclair and they had their own development team and one of the inventions was the Liberator in 1985. The Amstrad Notepad NC100, to me it always looked like a cheap clone of the Cambridge Z88 and another portable machine. Relatively early portable machines from the 1980s. Some are quite huge like this Osborne, some with about the same size look a little bit more handier like this Compaq and uh, this Toshiba T3200 is a machine I, I had at work in 1992. This was my desktop at the time I was working as a programmer and this was a uh, Amstrad's offering okay when there was always need for stronger computers on the desk called uh, workstations so here we have a microvax we have a sound spark station here Eula Packard with a workstation and not really workstation power, more kind of a early personal home computer from Commodore. And uh, this one is the good old IBM PC. And here we have some compatible machines which came out after the PC, Alphatronic, Amstrad, Compaq, you name it. Some museum display and uh, I see that there's really a lot of handmade displays here. The wall is not yet finished, there's some work to do. Next room, bigger machines, workstations. teletypes. At least this one looks like a workstation or a powerful server like this silicon graphics machine or uh, some web servers here. More silicon graphics. And this one is quite uh, well known is the S3000. 
GI Indigo. At one time in history, those were really expensive, powerful machines. Another timeline of the connected world, history of internet, different machines and uh, the story of communication like using modems over the telephone lines, Apple's iMac, the earlier Apple III, and this one is very special. This is the next tube invented uh, by Steve Jobs and his team, and uh, using a next tube. Tim Berners-Lee uh, invented HTML, if I remember correctly. Okay, there has always been a lot of gaming connected to uh, computing, video game terminals from the mid-1970s to the mid 80s. You ever played the game in your childhood? Maybe you'll find it on this wall. Games for multiple platforms, Sinclair, Commodore, Amstrad, you name it. Good list of well-known game consoles are in this area of the museum. So, Philips CDI, Amiga CD32, the Trivio, the Atari Jaguar, Sega Saturn, and then systems which are most likely still known by younger people like PlayStation, Xbox and so on. More story about gaming here with some arcade machines or some portable machines. Look to the ceiling from that place. Hello, ET. Calling home. Three D printer. Please do not touch. Good for for a message here. Do not enter. Okay, that was the main room. It took me almost 30 minutes. Spectrum user group from Germany and Syntec. Jesus corner. Main room, main stage. The last view here before leaving the room. Oh, I'm filming. <laughs> I don't want to be on the web.
just a short visit to the upper floor where all the storage of the museum is. They really do a great work in sorting, cataloging and storing unique items, having BX boxes for all the good things, really nice ordered and also taking care to the retail boxes, having the QL and the Jaguar side by side. Nice place. Still some work to do with the stuff here in the middle. I call this a BBC micro collection. Maybe 100 machines in one place. Not bad. It's a repair center. It is, yes. It is, yeah. It's a very messy one. Yeah, but at least work is being done. Great. And here we have a nice line out of Apple Macintosh computer and a poster of the Sinclair ZX8. So, that was a quick tour, 30 minutes plus, through the center of computing history in Cambridge. And uh, even it was not that short and maybe my spoken word was not always 100% correct. I hope it was informative for you and uh, I really highly uh, wish you can visit the museum one day on your own. So with a nice blue sky I close this video and wish you all the best. Bye.